The Four Horsewomen of Top Lane are among the most feared champions in the game for a number of reasons, key of which being their apparent ability to take on any and all who dare stand in their way, possessing an arsenal of attacks and abilities with boundless potential for skill expression. Aside from their extreme carry potential and mechanical ceiling, another trait they all share is how ubiquitous they are, with the combined pick rate easily surpassing 20% especially in high elo, meaning for every 5 games or so you're bound to have at least one of them. Having talked about Fiora and Camille so far, I plan to finish the job, and so for today we'll be discussing the member most notorious for the number of one tricks representing her. This episode of Vino One Place will be featuring Riven, the Exile. Riven stands out among the rest of the horsewomen despite being labeled as one of them. Though designated as a skirmisher, she prefers to fight with abilities instead of auto attacks, contrasting from Fiora, Camille, and Irelia who all make heavy use of them. Of course, Riven more than incorporates autos into her attack style, which I'll cover in detail in just a moment, but skirmishers are traditionally known for being very on-hit focused. Jax, Viego, Trindamir, Master Yi, Belveth, and the like. Riven is one of the few skirmishers in the game who is ability-based, separating her not just from her class but the other four horsewomen, which may also explain why she's considered the hardest to master of the four. Usually though, the greater a champion's difficulty, the less often they're played, and to an extent you'd be correct. She typically bears a lower pick rate in Platinum and below, while in Diamond Plus, she's consistently in the top 10 top laners if we go by popularity. Now for some of you, a Why Everyone Plays episode on Riven might have you confused, as Riven definitely used to be more prevalent back in Seasons 5 through 9, whether that's due to there being more champions played top than ever before, or because of the increased abundance of 200 years champs, one thing's for certain, she still has one of the most loyal player bases in the game, and is still reasonably popular today because of it. Another point of interest about Riven is that she's often the most stable of the four horsewomen. While Fiora, Irelia, and Camille may fluctuate in presence, I often find Riven mains holding onto her even if and when she's not performing all too well, making her definitely the most intriguing of the four in my eyes. So what makes her so popular, especially in the realm of one-tricking? She's become so infamous in the league community that oftentimes when one hears the term one-trick, she would be one of the first to come to mind. Though it pains me to say it because it sounds extremely cringe, Riven's popularity more than the other horsewomen is founded on how cool she feels to play. In other words, she has sauce. It's the same reason Lee Sin and Zed are popular. In a game where mechanical expression can sometimes be few and far between due to champions having far less attacks compared to, say, a fighting game, Riven stands out as an exception to this. The four horsewomen all have ways in which they can outplay their opponent, but micromechanically I'd give Riven the crown, as the difference between a bad Riven and a good one feels like two completely different champions. This barrier to entry carries with it a sense of prestige in addition to performance. The better your mechanics become on her, from animation cancelling to split second repositions to short trades or extended ones, the farther you can go on her, whereas for most other champions, there's only so much you can do with mechanics alone. Putting it bluntly, Riven is one of the only champions in the game whose moveset contains enough room for skill expression to where mechanics can make up for bad decisions. If a Riven player is caught in a rough spot, there's a greater chance of them fighting their way out of it than the likes of a Darius, Trindamir, what have you. Now on the other hand, if you had that same level of skill paired with good decisions, then it becomes very clear why there are so many challenger Riven players in the past and present. Boxbox, Box, Viper, Adrian, Riven, Built, General Sniper, Kumo, Alois to name some out of countless. You don't see anywhere near the same number of high-profile Fiora, Camille, and Irelia one-tricks. So yes, Riven's flashy, very flashy, and she possesses the same sense of freedom that I highlighted in my Why Everyone Plays Kane episode. If you were to say that Riven was the OG 200 years champion, you wouldn't be too wrong. She's had basically the same kit since her release back in Season 1, yet she still occasionally gets equated to modern day champs like Cassante and Yona despite not having the copious amount of BS that they do. The bulk of her skill expression stems from having the highest amount of free target mobility of the four horsewomen. Through Broken Wings and Valor, Riven comes equipped with four short-range dashes. In terms of actual distance traveled, all four of her dashes actually get beaten out by Camille's hookshot, but being split into four smaller dashes makes them better suited for combat. Hypothetically, a Jax, Trindamir, Wukong, or Irelia can close a lot more distance than Riven can in a shorter time, but when that dash is expended or interrupted, that is their only means of mobility. Having four dashes allows Riven to stagger her mobility. She could use all four of them together for the sake of distance, or she can use it to sidestep critical enemy skill shots, space just outside of her opponent's attack range, or close a tiny bit of distance. This also means trying to put distance away from her can actually be more difficult than others. For example, when trying to run from a Jax, you can flash out right as soon as he leap strikes onto you. If he doesn't have flash himself, you're in the clear, at least for the next few seconds. If Riven dashes towards you and you have flash, she has three more dashes to keep closing in on you. Conversely, she has four dashes to get away from you as well. If you're playing Xinjiao and she uses her first Q, which you match by using your E, she can use the remaining two Qs and her E to keep running away. With these dashes being free targeted and plentiful in quantity, Riven has a lot of freedom in how she navigates a fight or the rift. You can use one dash to dodge an ability, another dash to approach and deal damage, and then another dash to back away. You can weave your combos in a manner that makes it unclear as to whether you're poking for a short trade or if you're looking for a kill. If Camille wants to use hookshot, she has to hard commit to attacking or retreating. She can't do both in one rotation. 
Another component that lends to Riven's sense of freedom is the fact that she's the only mana-less champion of the Four Horsewomen. Not just that, but she's tied to no secondary resource that can divulge information to the enemy. Take Set, he's also a mana-less champion who prefers to spam his attacks as often as possible, but with this resource bar storing power for Haymaker, his opponent can use that as an indication of when to expect an incoming W and play accordingly. Rengar's a mana-less champion who also likes to spam abilities, but with this ferocity mechanic he has to make a decision on which empowered ability to use and when, which the opponent can also be aware of. Riven on the other hand is a true mana-less champion. You could argue that her incentive to not spam abilities is to make use of Runic Blade's auto attacks, but that is an entirely separate mechanic that doesn't affect the strength of her abilities whatsoever. Essentially, Riven is only held back by her cooldowns and health bar. If she has any sustain, which Riven players historically build a modicum of, she can stay out in the field indefinitely. Back in Season 13 when Ability Haste ran rampant, she would routinely see over 100, in addition to all of the supplementary effects afforded by the items purchased. Champions of mana only really have to worry about it for the first 10 minutes of the game before they get their first mana item or start getting access to blue buffs and the like. But with how much early game matters in this day and age, that's a huge advantage Riven has over other champions. This is made especially apparent by the presence of her E, a decently strong shield that can absorb at least one ability's worth of damage from her lane opponent. Even on mana-less champions, shields are kept in check by some kind of resource. Mordekaiser has to charge up indestructible, Set has to take a ton of damage, Rumble has to be careful not to overheat, Shen has to strike enemies with abilities to accelerate the cooldown, Yana has to damage an enemy champion, Yasuo has to move around a lot, Lee Sin has to watch his energy. Besides Garen, whose shield has a noticeably longer cooldown and a much shorter duration, Riven is the only mana-less champion who can generate a shield on demand and with a low cooldown. That's a very special privilege to have free of charge. On the subject of shields, Riven has very practical answers to enemy pressure. Here's what I mean by that. Skirmishers are known to possess situational defensive tools that fluctuate in value either because they're intended for a specific kind of attack or because of the need for strategic application. Yasuo's Windwall is one of the most overpowered abilities mankind has ever bore witness to, but against a Renekton or Darius it may as well not exist. It's quite rare for a skirmisher to have on-demand defensive options to respond to enemy pressure. Riven, however, does. She has two forms of crowd control, an AoE knockup on her third Q, an AoE stun on her W, letting her disrupt many champions' abilities if timed correctly. For example, anyone who channels, she can instantly press W, such as if she's getting ganked by a Ramus, you can stun right before he gets in contact to cancel Powerball. Crowd control is seen as a universal response to any champion whose name isn't Olaf. Riven has two of them. She can chain CC her target without any assistance. I know that in the realm of lockdown, people would point to Camille as the more qualified horsewoman, but simply having something like an on-demand AoE stun can be very helpful, especially in the mid to late game. As for defensive utility, like I said, she's the only true mana-less champion with a shield that she can achieve on demand, which just so happens to also help her avoid tax too. Fiora's Riposte, Irelia's Defiant Dance, and Jax's Counter-Strike have the potential to mitigate a lot more than Riven can, but they can also do nothing and put them in an even more vulnerable position than if they just held onto it. So yes, cast for cast, Riven's defensive option gets overshadowed by other skirmishers. That being said, you won't see Fiora use her post to block minuscule things like Mundo Q, Rumble Harpoon, or Urgot Q unless it's an all-in fight. Riven, however, certainly can and often does, since Valor will come off cooldown in a fraction of the time it takes her post or Windwall to and that can add up over the course of a game. People often complain that Yanni gets a 500 HP shield from W every 6 seconds, but how is that any different from Riven getting a 500 HP shield every 4 seconds? Putting it simply, what others have in quantity, Riven has in quality, which can sometimes be better depending on what you're looking for. Her abilities offer more freedom in how to respond to enemy attacks. If the enemy Renekton tries to dash in, you can stun with Key Strike, then dash away. If the enemy team was spamming Blinding Dart, you can shield every single one of them. Continuing on with the aspect of freedom is the fact that Riven has the ability to play for either 1v1s or teamfights. All of her skills deal AoE damage, and a lot of it. If she can layer Broken Wings, Key Strike, and Blade of the Exile onto the enemy team, we're looking at thousands of damage in a single rotation. Obviously her dash ranges are too short for her to serve as a primary engage for her team, but I've seen enough Riven montages to know that a good flank position can result in simultaneous obliteration of the entire enemy backline, whereas Fiora, Irelia, and Camille have to dispatch one at a time. This in no way diminishes her dueling capability either. With the aforementioned low cooldown shield and many options to sidestep attacks, there aren't that many champions who can take her on 1v1 in the mid to late game. I'll concede that she's definitely the weakest horseman in straight up duels, but it's not enough to where players don't have to respect a side laning Riven. Therein lies the point. She can excel in all types of combat scenarios, 1v1s, skirmishes between 2 or 3 members of each team, or full blown team fights. She has the DPS and mobility of a skirmisher and the front loaded engage potential of a diver. She doesn't suffer from target selection the same way other skirmishers do. Whether facing one or three, she can destroy them all the same. 
The freedom of deciding whether to split push and respond to teamfights is accentuated by her free target mobility. She can easily run down a lane and get to towers, and the moment she has to get to someplace else, she can hop, skip, and jump through the jungle to join her team. Top laners are usually either split pushers or team fighters, not both. Riven's one of the few top laners who can do both. Last but not least, her damage. Physical damage dealers who rely on abilities for DPS tend to fall off in the late game. Renekton, Pantheon, Lee Sin, Rek'Sai, and such. Riven's also heavily ability-based, but she scales pretty damn well all things considered. Not just that, but because she's ability-based, she tends to have more freedom and build options than her peers, who are usually forced to build their core before they can even think about changing things up. For example, Fiora and Camille must build Ravenous Hydra and Triforce, non-negotiable. These days, Irelia has to go Blade of the Ruined King if she wants to keep up in damage. Riven, on the other hand, has a few options for what she can do thanks to her damage being attached to her abilities. She can go Bruiser, Lethality, Sustain, Tank Shred, Burst Resistance, all that stuff. I've seen Riven's go Black Cleaver first item, Ravenous Hydra first item, the new Profane Hydra even, Sundered Sky, recently with how strong Eclipse is, that's what Riven players are going for right now as it compounds their trade potential with both the damage and shield. But she can realistically make use of many different items, and has done so in the past. Shoujin Rush back when had the ultimate effect, Gore Trinker back when Mythic items are out. I saw Dustblade a few times last year, likely for the same reasons as Profane Hydra. Beyond that, Riven can make use of items that have special utility. On occasion, you'll see Serpent's Fang and Zerilda's Grudge taken by Riven, which you never see on the other horsewomen. Mind you, that's because she has no semblance of tank shredding in her kit, so she has to supplement with items, but having the option to build that is what makes her so adaptable. If she's confident she can outtrade her opponent, she can go fully Thoughty Burst one shot. If fighting someone who can duel, she might go a trade sustain build with Eclipse and Hydra. If she's staring down a tank, she can rush Black Cleaver. Item selection plays a big role in champion longevity and popularity. It's why Kaisa is so prevalent, because she can build literally anything for any situation. I would say the main factors allowing Riven to scale so well compared to other AD casters are threefold. One, she has a lot of scaling in her kit, far more than most. Her passive gives 60% bonus damage per auto, combining all three broken wings together is 210 total AD. Key strikes 100 bonus AD, and wind slash is 180% at max strength. Let's also not forget the bonus 25% AD from her ultimate. 2. AoE damage. Renekton, Pantheon, Lee Sin, and such can only exert the bulk of their pressure on a single target. Meanwhile, Riven can apply it to the entire team, potentially quintupling her maximum damage output. 3. While it's not nearly as pronounced, Riven gets tankier by building damage. Her Valor Shield has a bonus AD ratio of 110. When she reaches 400, 500, 600 AD, you're looking at a 7 to 800 HP shield every 3 to 4 seconds. That's pretty huge for someone who generally builds Bruiser items like Death's Dance and Sterex, so she deals a ton of damage and gets more resilient over time. Granted, Camille, Irelia, and Fiora probably still scale better in DPS, but you get the point. Overall, Riven is a very expressive champion, both in playstyle and attributes. The Riven players have a tendency to complain about how much work it takes to play her only to get stat checked by Garen. The proof is self-evident. She is one of the few champions who proportionally rewards a player's skill and effort. For the vast majority of champions, there are hard limits to what they can do, no matter how good the player is. For Riven, at the very least, she gives you the impression that you can fight your way through everything. Considering she's one of the most popular top laners in Diamond, Master, Grandmaster, and Challenger, I'm inclined to believe the same. She is one of the four horsewomen after all. They were named as such for 1v9 in games in the hands of a capable player. What do you guys think about Riven? Do you agree with my points, or do you think there's something else that draws people to her? Let me know in the comments down below. For now, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at VarsFam, join my Discord server, and check out my other Why Everyone Plays episodes if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.